Hello, can you hear me? Cool, awesome. So let's get started. So I'm Rajesh Kumar. I'm a software engineer at Uber. And today I'm going to talk about data structures with J JavaScript. So first question which comes to mind is why do we need data structures with JavaScript at all? So like, you know, the obvious, the last talk, if you were here, you heard about Node. And uh, Node is an awesome platform in which you can write web servers and uh, backend code. And to know data structures and handle them properly is very important. Similarly, uh, D3, data-driven documents, is an awesome tool uh, which you can use to create nice visualization which are interactive. And to make it really responsive, like it's really important to know, like, you know what kind of data you are dealing with, how you can handle them in an e efficient way. So like, one of the important things I want to, you to take away from this talk is this particular slide. So here uh, I have plotted five functions, which is log n. Uh, and log n is the bottom most, you know, like uh, on the x-axis, closest in the blue color. And as you can see, that's, it's increasing at really slow rate. Um, and uh, next is n. So like, you know, so well, before that, uh, the x-axis is the number of inputs, like how many inputs you have, like how many data you, elements you have, and number of, and the y is the no, time it takes to process that input, right? So I have plotted till 50, and as you can see, that log n grows really slowly. For 50, it's around 6, right? And then uh, for n, n is like equal to 50, so that's 50. And uh, similarly, like we have l log n, which is growing at kind of uh, faster pace, no, but no, not so fast. Uh, but uh, here you can see that uh, this one is growing at a much faster rate, n square. And similarly, like NQ for 10, it's 1,000, right? So let's imagine for a mo moment that we had to plot this NQ function uh, on this graph for 50. So that's about 125,000. To really plot that, like how many, how much of this uh, length of the slide do we need? Any rough estimates? I estimate that will be around 60 floors of this building, right? So that's really, really, really a lot of difference than what we see in the login. So that's why login is really, really important, and that's why we care about login. So next question is, what is login, right? So what, what exactly is this login? So one of the simple ways of explaining is like this one, this diagram we have right here, and we can imagine that this is a cell, and at time one, we have one cell. And at each timestamp, it divides into two cells. So at time, timestamp uh, two, there are two cells. And timestamp three, there are four cells. At timestamp three, there are four into two, eight, and then 16 at timestamp four. So this is called exponential growth. So every time we are doubling, right? Um, so and if you think about log n, it's just, uh, sorry about that. Um, so log n, now we just imagine it opposite, right? So we have two, so at each timestamp, two cells combine into one. So now we have 16 at timestamp one and timestamp three, sorry, at one, um, there are 16 and at timestamp two, they combine to form eight cells. And then eight combine to form four and four combine to form two and one. So now the length of this tree, if you say, is the log n. So that's a simple way of imagining what log n is. So how many times did it take me to process the input? So if I can divide my problem in half every time, then the number of time it takes me to process the input is log n. And that's the height of this tree. So this is a really important concept. And like you know, if, um, if you can grasp this, that's really one thing uh, out of this talk, which is really good knowledge to take home. So. Today, we will talk about some basic data structures in JavaScript and some, some other advanced. Uh, so let's go over some of the basic data structure. So the very basic data structure in array is array, right? Um, so here, like, there are two ways of initializing an array. So you can say my array equal to square brackets, and then initialize um, uh, 0 to some value and 1 to some value. So that's one way of initializing. The other way is like you can say my array equal to new array, 40 and 100. And then uh, as you can guess, when you print this, it will print two. There are two elements, 40 and 100. Uh, and then you can say my array equal to new array, 40. Any guesses what it will print? 
40, yeah, I heard some 40s, yeah, so it will print 40, which is a little counterintuitive counter to me, but uh, you know, so that's why I prefer to use the first uh, way of initializing rather than the second. And similarly, there are some other uh, entry cases in uh, JavaScript. So one of other one is the length. So here, you know, for empty array, length will be zero. Uh, but when we set some my array 100 equal to true, and there are no elements from you know zero to 99, and when we try to print the length, uh, any guesses what it will print? Uh, I heard one. Any other? 101. So 101 is correct. So yeah. So we have to be careful. Like uh, so, JavaScript is a little bit uh, tricky in that way. So you have to be careful with using uh, this kind of uh, data structures. Uh, other intricacy uh, which uh, we can talk about is enumeration of array. So we we have an array. We want to go over different elements, and that intricacy is that different implementation like V8, which Node uses, and Spider Monkey, or like you know Rhino, any of those, so they have different implementation, and there's no guarantee in which order this will be printed. So it can print 1,000 and 0, or 0 or 1,000. So you can't guarantee that. And other way of enumerating is like you, you can take i from 0 to you know, um, 1,000, and then start printing my array i. So as you can see, we have not defined 1 to 999. So here it will go over all those values and print undefined. Uh, similarly, we can also implement multi-dimensional arrays in JavaScript. Uh, this is like the way we do it is like we keep array inside an array, and this is an implementation. Uh, you don't need to really, it's pretty simple. I, can, I will be posting this slides online so you can uh, look at it at your leisure. Uh, but the idea is basically you take an array and you can put array inside an array to create multi-dimensional array. And then you can use it like this, so you can define your mat. 4, 3, 0. 0 is the initial element you want to initialize, and then you can set value and use that. And multidimensional arrays are also useful data structures to reach your element pretty fast. So next important data structure is the map. So map is the, you can imagine this as, like, you know, so there is a key, and it is pointing to some value. So it's some, some kind of a pointer. So you can directly look at your key and go to the value you are looking for. So that's a uh, map for you. Um, so map in uh, JavaScript is pretty easy. It's an inbuilt map object, so you can use the object, and then you can uh, define like you know what is the uh, state a city is in. So San Francisco is in California, Seattle is in Washington, Portland is in Oregon, and you can go back and look like where is San Francisco, where is Portland, and if you look something like Washington D.C., it will return undefined, so you know that this is not present. And you can also iterate over the map, like where key map, and then you can go over the, print the value like this. So other thing with map is also you have, the thing is like it only supports keys as strings. So you can't have objects as you know, your keys in JavaScript. Um, but ECMS script six, which is uh, the next version of JavaScript and is already supported by many browsers uh, like Firefox and Chrome, you can uh, use the inbuilt uh, map which supports uh, also object as keys. And this is the difference. Uh, you can go and read about uh, this map. And also, the ECMS script 6 supports weak map, which is similar to map. Only difference is you can't iterate over the keys. So next data structure, uh, you might have heard about like a stack a lot. So what exactly is a stack? So stack is a data structure is where you can think about is last in, first out. So so you start pu uh, pushing stuff into the stack. So you push one, you push two, push three, push four. And then when you want to take it out, you take out like from the top. So you take four out, then you take three out, then you take two out, and to take one out. And uh, JavaScript is pretty easy to implement. You can implement using an array. So you can say stack equal to an array. And then stack dot push pushes the function. So you push one, two, three, four. And then uh, array has a pop function, so which is exactly like stack. So you can say stack dot pop. So that's how you implement. Uh, pretty easy to implement. Q is pretty similar data structure to stack. It's uh, the opposite of kind of first in first out. So whatever you put first, push one, two, three, four, and then uh, you can use shift to like you know take uh, elements out from the beginning one, two, three, and four. So that's a Q. 
Uh, similarly, the set is like, uh, it's similar to map. Only difference is uh, it says yes and no. Like, you know, does set have a value? Is it part of the set? So you can imagine this as a bag, and it contains all the cities, Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, on the west coast. And then uh, the way to set is like using JavaScript object. And exactly like map, you can set it to true. And then uh, you can get the keys uh, using object.keys. So similar to a map, ECM Script 6 has native set support, and it supports object as keys, and also there's a weak set similar to weak map. So uh, this is the basic data structures uh, we learned about, and this is kind of summarizing the you know, advantages and disadvantages of each. Um, so let's, for example, look at array. So insertion is pretty easy. Order one means constant time. So like, you, know, you can directly go to the index, insert it, Similarly, you can delete directly. Um, and for example, stack, like you can insert at the top of the stack constant time, and deletion also from the top constant time. But if you have to search some element, like you know, does this element uh, contain that uh, element or not, uh, that will be order n, because you can only look at the top element, and then you have to take each one out to see exactly which one are you looking for. So that's order n. So, Questions I, I have for you is like for an array, what do you think will be the search time? I heard one. O, o N, O N is the correct, because you have to look at, there's no order, so you have to look at each element, to go through each, and so that's O N, which is order of the elements. So that's the summary of the basic data structure. Now let's move on to some uh, advanced data structures. So the first one I have is a binary tree. Uh, the way you define a binary tree is, so you have a node, and it has one left child and one right child. And each node has a parent node. And there is a root node whose parent node is none, nil. So that's a simple definition of binary tree. There's no other property, and that's a binary tree. So next one is a binary search tree, which is similar to binary tree, which is, binary search tree is also a binary tree, but it has extra property. And that property is all the left children will be less than the node. So look at 10. So 8, 3, 9, all are less than 10. Similarly, look at 8. Uh, all the left children, which is 3, is less than 8. And all the right children will be more than the node. So like, you know, 14, 13, 16, all are more than 10. Similarly, like um, 16 is more than 14. So that's property holds for each node, and that's a binary search tree. So now, just with this property, um, you know, you get a lot of extra power. So for example, we have to search for an element. We have to find that, you know, does 13 occur in this binary search tree? So what we do, so we go to the node, root node, see, oh, 13 is greater than 10, so it must be on the right side. So you go to the right side, 14. So 14 is more than 13, so it must be on the left side. So you go to 13, and you can see, oh, yeah, 13 is present. So I was able to like, look at one, two, three steps, and then I was able to you know, uh, say that a element is present or not. And that's exactly log n we talked about earlier in the talk. And that's the beauty of the binary search tree. So there is also other stuff you can do with binary search trees, like in, in order traversal. So in order traversal is like uh, if you want to print the elements in the order of increasing order. So what you do is you go to the left, then root and right, and you call it recursively. So you go to left, left, left. So you print this, there's nothing here, so you print left. And then you print a root, and then you print right. So three, eight, nine. And similarly, you follow it up. So you can see three, eight, nine, ten. These are sorted orders, so you can print that in order n time, which is pretty useful in some cases. So next uh, data structure we have is uh, binary heap. So heap is uh, important, like you know, it, like you can look at the lowest element in order one time, constant time. So the root of the tree is the really the lowest element, or actually you can put also highest element depending on it's a mean heap or max heap. So we're talking about mean heap in this example. So the heap property is like both the element will be more than the root or the node you are looking at. So eight and nine are more than three. 10 and 14 are more than eight. 
13 and 16 are more than 9, right? So that's a binary heap. So, so now suppose you want to find the second lowest element. So you want to get rid of 3, so, um, and you want to find what the second, most, uh, second lowest element is. So in this case, uh, we call something called reheapify. So you get rid of 3. And then, so reheapify will like move the l lower of those two children as the, as the parent. So it goes up. And similarly, it will call it recursively. So like, you know, lower of 10 and 14 goes up. So that's reheapify. And now you have 8 at the root, which is the second lowest element. Um, and similarly, you can insert element here in the empty position and call reheapify to uh, reget your heap. Uh, next data structure, which a lot of people use or talk about, is Bloom filters. So Bloom filter is a uh, probabilistic data structure. So the advantage is like you know, uh, your memory is uh, very it uses less memory, uh, but the disadvantage is like you know they are false positive. So it can say yes to something which is not there. So let's see how it works. So the way it works is like you have three hashing functions. So for any other, suppose you want to uh, insert x, you call three hashing function and set those values. In, in your uh, uh, array as one. So like x goes there one, x is set one here, and x is set one here. And similarly, you can call the same hashing function on y and set those values. So but look at this, there is a collision, right? So one is set for both x and y. So now, because there is a collision, it may, it's very possible that you can say yes to something which is not in the Bloom filter. So. So, but the advantage is like it uses really less memory, and sometimes you are fine with like having false positive. So we talked about some of the advanced data structures, and uh, and this is some kind of summary like uh, how what are this. Uh, so binary tree, for example, uh, takes four inserts of log n as we saw, and search actually by in binary tree order n because there is no uh, there is no order. Similarly, for like binary search tree, inserts in log n. And deletion can take actually order n because you don't know what element you are deleting. Uh, any ideas what the search will take in a binary search tree? Log n, perfect, yeah. And the heap, so how much is, will the search take? Sorry? O n, yes, exactly, because you can't really, there's no way of, you know, Directly reaching to the elements, so actually. In, so as you can see, that you know, for the given problem, you have to decide what data structure is good. You can't use the same data structure for different problems. So some data structure have advantage, one advantage, some has other advantage. So you have to look at your problem and see uh, what exactly, what kind of data structure you want to use. So uh, you had, so you don't have to implement all this by hand. So there is already good uh, existing um, implementation out there. I have listed some of those, and I'll I'll post these slides online so you can go and use uh, the data structure we talked about today, and also like a lot of other data structures uh, which are ready for you to use. And this, these are the so this is just a uh, like you know getting you started in the using thinking about our data structures in JavaScript. So as next step, there are really good resources available online. So there's this Coursera course, which I really recommend about algorithms. So it's a good starting point as a next step to go and you know, check it out. Uh, you can do it at your own pace, and it's pretty awesome. And similarly, there is uh, Udemy has this uh, data structure course. So th those are pretty good. So now uh, we have discussed some, you know, basic data structure, some advanced data structure. And um, so one of the motivation of this talk was, you know, like uh, we, we go to interviews and uh, front-end developers, like uh, we, like, you know, we are asked sometimes data structure questions, so like how to handle them. So we'll go through some like sample practice problem and see like how can we apply what we learned today to solve those problems. And so I have some problems here, right here. So first problem I, I have is, um, Given an array, like, you know, we have to find if there are any duplicates. So think for a moment, like, how would you solve it using what we learned today? Any ideas? Any? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, so that's one idea. So, like, 
he, he said that you know you can put everything in a map. So uh, that's one solution. Uh, so that's pretty good. Uh, so so you can use the map. So all you need to do is like you know create a map and then start putting uh, everything from an array. And as soon as you have a conflict, you can see that okay that element is already there. Uh, so the one yeah. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. So you can also map or set, which is, yeah. Um, so that's one way of doing it. So only thing is like you need extra memory for that. So that's kind of uh, some cases you have two big element. So depending on the use case, so that's one good way. Other way is like you can sort the array, right? So you can sort it, and then that will take n log n, and then you can just go through in a linear fashion and see like you know which are consecutive same elements. So that's other way of solving it. Cool. So next, next is given two arrays, we have to find smallest common element. Any, any ideas? Right. That's a good idea. So, so he said basically what you can do is sort two arrays and then basically iterate through them or merge. So you can just look at the top element, and then. Uh, if they are common, then you have the solution. Otherwise, you just advance the top, uh, like you know, the pointer which is um, the lowest, right? So the lowest cannot never be the duplicate. We already compared that. So you just move that, and it's like you know, go next, next, and just see which one is the common. So that's one way. Another is like we can use the same map like we talked about in last. So basically, we can store one array in the map, and then we can go through the second array, and that will basically give us the. Uh, duplicate element. So the only the difference is like you know here it's taking n log n, and there's no extra memory. But here it's basically we are going through uh, extra memory, but it's taking order n. So that's the like you have to look at the problem and see like what exactly you want to achieve. What's your constraints are? So other problem I have is uh, so reverse the sentence. So like you know so I am solving a problem, and then we have to make problem is solving am I. So how do I do that? Array dot reverse. So first, yeah, first that's a that's a good uh, good idea. Yeah. So so array dot reverse will work here, but we have to create first array and then you know so just create array and array dot reverse that will work. Um, other ideas we could also use um, stack here actually, right? So basically, uh, last in first out. So we basically just push on the top of the stack and just um, yeah get it from behind. So we can use the stack to solve this problem. So this is uh, next question is given a book find the k most occurring words. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. That's a great. Idea. So you can use the map. Um, so for each word, you just go and keep incrementing how many times you see a see a word. Um, then you have the count of all the words, and then all you need to do is to just sort it, right? So then you have, can get the k most, k most um, occurring, occurring. So actually, we can make it better. But before that, I want to ask you this question. So given a stream of integers, find k smallest integers. So like stream is basically you are getting element one by one, like three, eight, nine. So it keeps coming. But uh, you have to always give an answer that which is your k smallest integer at each point. So how do we do that? Binary search tree. So, so binary search tree, OK, that's, a, that's one good idea. So basically, you use binary search tree, and then uh, you can search. So yeah. So only thing is, like, you know, for binary search tree, you can't find your lowest element. So you have to go through the all. So you have to do log n each time. So, but that will work. That's one good start. Uh, what's the other? Is there some other good way of doing it? Binder heap, yes, yeah, exactly. Thank you. So basically, you just take a heap of size k, and then you can just insert into the binder heap, and then you just look at the top element. Like if it is smaller, you know that you know, like this element is smaller than it. So basically, uh, and then you can just delete the, that element and then insert that element, and then you have the. So similar, this idea can be applied in this question. So for k most occurring, you don't need to sort the whole array. You can just create a heap of size k, and then you can just find the. So that's uh, like if your k is really small, for example, 100, and your n is million, then it can save a lot of time, as you can see. So I think, uh, yeah, so thanks a lot for uh, coming to my talk. And I have posted the slides right here. 
So it's on um, my school site, and also it's on the GitHub. So I, whatever I use code and stuff is there as well, like high charts and other stuff. And Uber, I work for Uber, and just as a plug-in, like, you know, Uber is hiring, and please come talk to me if you're interested to work at Uber. Um, Thanks. <laughs>